So today's topic, or one of the topics that, that is very interesting for our patients. It's one of our favorites. It's something we call in the clinic cerumen. Ooh. But cerumen is commonly known as earwax. Earwax. We get asked all the time, how should I clean my ears? How do I keep my ears free of this wax? Mm -hmm. And it's a surprisingly common problem and a common question that we get. First of all, when you go to see a doctor, you're going to assume that if they see earwax, that they're totally grossed out. <laughs> the truth is, doctors aren't grossed out by earwax. It's normal, <laughs> it should be in your ear canal. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Don't be self-conscious about earwax, right? It is. You they're know always like, oh, I'm so sorry, that's disgusting. I, yeah. I, I showered today, <laughs> I cleaned my ears today, I, I can't believe you're seeing anything in there. I forgot to, I forgot to do a Q-tip this don't, morning, I'm so sorry. Don't be nervous, yeah, no. yeah, don't be it's, nervous. It's normal, we don't expect you. You know, when you go to the dentist, Oh, yeah. You brush Same your thing. teeth, yeah, yeah. you floss, and you make sure that you know things are clean. And people have the same idea when they come to us. They think, well, I should really clean my ear out. Yeah, yeah. We're not expecting that. We, we don't need you to, to go crazy cleaning the ears before you see it. Let's start at the very basic. So let's assume that most adults, and uh, that's who we see mostly, most adults have an ear canal that's like one and a half centimeters long. So you're talking about an inch and a half, so pretty, pretty small space, right? And so if this finger represents your entire ear canal, which I know that's exaggerated, it's too long, but the first third is actually where your wax is produced. It's actually not produced deep in the ear canal. So yeah, yeah. people are curious, where does it come from? Where yeah, do yeah. yeah, it's so secreted by glands. Two, two different types of glands. In the lateral portion of our ear canal. So towards the entrance of the yep. canal, there are glands in the skin that just secrete this stuff. Mm -hmm. Similar to how we secrete sweat. Very Things similar. Like in fact, it's the same, you know, one of the glands that keeps our hair follicles moist and, uh, you know, with oils, less dander, yeah, yeah and, and we get the oils in our scalp that are that are needed. Mm -hmm. They're also in our ear canal. These sebaceous glands kind of secrete a little oil to keep things healthy and supple, mm -hmm. not too dry. Natural moisturizer. All natural, organic. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, this is what we're supposed to have. Then the other gland is a ceruminous gland, which is kind of a kind of a waxy, sticky substance that has some acid in it. And apparently, when those two mix, you get earwax or cerumen. Yeah, so the ear makes it, it's natural, it's normal to have. Mm -hmm. It's natural to be colored, yeah. you know, kind of that orangey brown color. That's normal. The longer it sits in the canal, the darker it gets. Mm -hmm. But normal fresh earwax is supposed to be kind of that yellowy orange. And then as it stays in the canal longer, it usually moves into a darker brown color. And there's, there's actually quite a few different types of earwax. So mm -hmm. it's normal to have a thin, runny, kind of golden earwax. Other people have a much thicker, much stickier mm -hmm. uh, type of earwax. Some people, especially in some Asian countries, they have really just dry, flaky wax. It mm -hmm. almost just looks like skin, uh, yeah. flaky skin that, that, that is dry and, and, and not yellow or brown at all. So yeah. there's different types of earwax. Yeah, and with the different consistencies, you can imagine that if it's mixed with some dead skin and uh, mixed maybe more with the sebaceous gland versus the ceruminous, you're going to get different consistencies, different textures. And some of the earwax, when it's there for a bit, it's just adhered or really tightly fastened to the ear canal wall. And so there's those type of patients where it's like, it's on there like a leech or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. So there's there's all types of earwax. Are we fascinated with we, this? We, we, we love we it. Get, we get weirdly excited mm -hmm. about earwax. But so the question is though, what should we be doing to clean our ears? Yes. Yeah, people are, they, they really want to know how they should be mon or managing this at home, right? That's right. Can you, do you know if someone's been using a Q-tip? Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Well, sometimes. Yeah. I, I should qualify this. Because there are different types of earwax, some people, especially people that have real thin, runny wax, if they use a Q-tip, it kind of absorbs it. Yeah, and, and doing it, a pretty good job. And it does the job. People that have a thicker wax, when they use that Q-tip, it really does just push it down in deep. Yeah. So, so identifier number one, that you are a Q-tip abuser. Mm. Number one is the wax is deeper than it should be. Oh, you're yeah. looking in there and you're like, how oh, the wax get beyond the second bend? Because yeah, it's, how did it's, it get down there? It's supposed to be in this lateral part of the canal, right kind of towards the entrance. So if we look in there and oh, it's deep. And sometimes you even get the dimple. You mm. know what I'm talking about. 
the dimple, mm -hmm. the concave area. It's like that's a swab push pusher inner if yeah. I've ever seen yeah, one. Yeah, you you picture you mm -hmm. picture a wall of wax, and when a Q-tip gets pushed in against Whoop. it. It creates that dimple. So mm. you look in and you see this concave wax. Yeah, and then we you say, know. are you using Q-tips? They're like, oh no, I don't Hardly use those. Ever. It's yeah. like, you're guilty. Mm. You are so busted. I see the dimple. We know, we yeah, know. Yeah, we know that. Too deep and big old dimple. And by the way, that makes it a lot harder to get out. When you see just normal wax in there, you can usually get behind it with mm -hmm. instruments and pull it out. When you've got the dimple that's pushed back, it's a lot harder. Right, right. It's a lot harder to get behind it with instruments. We're it makes it worse. Yeah, we're not saying don't use Q-tips. We're just saying if the Q-tip is designed to just kind of be in the opening, maybe don't be too aggressive or too ambitious and go deep with that Q-tip, right? It's just kind of a absorb some water right there in the, you know, in the opening. So don't, don't push it in too deep. No, and you know, I'll be honest. I tell people sometimes, for some people, Q-tips are okay. Mm -hmm. It depends on the type of wax you have. It depends on how deep you're pushing it in. For example, if you look in an ear mm -hmm. and you see very little ear wax and the person acknowledges, hey, I use a Q-tip almost every day, you probably look at them and say, hey, whatever you're doing, keep, keep doing it up. It. It's okay. You're doing a great job. But the problem is often people don't know. That's they right. don't know that they are pushing the mm. wax down in. And so as a general rule, because for many people, Q-tips can be problematic, we often tell everybody just avoid them because Q you don't know if you're going to be a problematic earwax <laughs> producer or not. Yeah. It's Q-tip blindness. Q -tip. It's an issue. <laughs> it's, it's a problem. We, should, we could call it that. So if, so. We're, if we're telling people don't use Q-tips as a general rule, yeah. what should they be doing? Let's get into what are some of the appropriate things. First of all, your ear canal, the wax, and the skin that's in there, it kind of will migrate. It's uh, the way we're designed, the way our ear canals are, when it's functioning properly, and I'll, I'll say that, and that's most people, um, the ear canal just kind of, the, the, the skin just kind of migrates very slowly on its own. And so imagine you just needing to be in the shower, soap and water, you washed your face, let's go to the lateral side of your head, and let's just soap and water, just clean the opening of your ear canal about as far as your fingers can go. And usually you're cleaning the wax that has arrived that day. And just consider it like a little UPS, brown gets it done, just a little <laughs> shipment coming out every day. And you're just, you know, if you have decent hygiene and your anatomy's working where the skin is migrating that wax out, you're probably going to do a great job just cleaning the, uh, the concha bowl or that open bowl. If you just clean that every day, you're probably going to do a great job cleaning your ears. Yeah, most people don't realize our ears are self-cleaning. Like you've talked That's about with the cool. skin migrating. Our, our ears are designed to produce the wax and then push it out. Yep. It's like a little conveyor belt. Our ear carries that wax out. And so it doesn't get down in deep naturally. Mm -hmm. Naturally, it comes out. Yeah. So yeah, I'll tell people the same thing. Maybe put your finger in a washcloth and maybe when you're in the shower, just get in there and clean right in there. and. The ear will naturally push it out and then you yeah, can yeah. clean what's at the entrance so it won't be visible. It's great. It's there great to go. do it in the shower. You're yeah. already sudsy, soapy, you're cleaning your ears and you wash your hands. It's, it's a no-brainer. For the vast majority of people, that's all you need to do. Let now, a little water get in there, let the washcloth get in there. Let's talk but, about water yes. really quick. Let's talk about some water. Of us, some of us are really anal about, I can't have water in my ears, I think I can feel it. I just, it's driving me nuts. Did you know that within 15 minutes, any water that could possibly be there is going to be gone because your ear canal is not sloped like this. Like we think our ear canals are horizontal. They actually have like a 15, sometimes 20 degree tilt. And even though they're kind of bendy in there, the water just wants to come out. It's this self-cleaning, wonderful, just the way our body's created. Our wax comes out on its own. The water comes out on its own. You don't need to be too nervous. And if you ever think, sometimes I feel like I do have water that, that gets stuck back there, come and see us, we'll look at it. I mean, you may have a piece of wax that's really deep, and when the water gets behind that, you're right, it does get trapped back there, so we need to remove that wax. But most people, the, the water just flows right out. You don't need to be anal about getting water out of your ear canals. A common misconception that people have is that water can somehow get like deep down mm. beyond the eardrum, way down in there. People don't realize the ear canal is a tube that dead ends in an eardrum that is watertight. Sealed off. Water cannot get past your eardrum. Mm -mm. So it's literally just a tube that dead ends in a watertight seal. 
And so, yeah, the, the water might get down in there, but it'll just come right back out eventually. Yep. So yep, yep. water in your ears is not a big deal. It's, I, it's not I think bad. that's a great way. Now, some people do have conditions in their ears. Let's talk about Mr. Dry Ear. Dry ear. Yeah, Mr. Dry ear. Mr. Dry ear is common. No wax at all. Yeah. In fact. Super dry. In yeah. fact, he wishes he had more oils. Yeah, because that would make it less dry and maybe mm -hmm. itchy. So these people, sometimes their skin, uh, like an onion, it gets layers and the skin just grows on itself. And it's like this, this unique, like you've seen these rolls of, of uh, hay bales in the fields, right? Our farmers here in St. George, and, they, and they're just rolled up. Well, sometimes the skin in an ear canal can just kind of build on itself. And so that, we see those kind of patients. It's not so much a wax issue as it is a skin issue. And that type of, it looks like wax when you look in there, but it's actually just skin rolled up on itself and you have to kind of clip it out. Those kind of individuals really should be treating their ear canal with a little bit of, you know, a little oil. Mm -hmm. And there's oils that are built for the ear canal. Uh, we sell them here and they sell them in the supermarket, different things like that. But some people have uh, different skin conditions and they're just naturally super dry, not just in their ear canals, but everywhere. And so if you're wondering about that, you know, go and see a professional and uh, you can come here and we can kind of look at it and see if maybe once a week you ought to be adding a couple drops mm -hmm. in there to keep your ear canal, keep the ear canal healthy. And you know, I want to talk too, we, we talked about what many people can do to keep their ears free of wax in the shower, mm -hmm. talked about the dry ears, maybe using a little oil. What about people that really do have a wax buildup problem? Yeah. There are people that do produce a lot of ear wax. Excessive. Excessive. We have patients that need to come in regularly and have the wax taken out yeah. because they're producing so much. Sometimes these folks want to know there's got to be something I can do at home more than just the shower, more mm -hmm. than just the washcloth. So yep. maybe what are some ideas there? Right, so pretty, pretty easy to do at home. A very easy um, procedure is get someone you love, someone that you know is, is with you, a friend, uh, maybe a loved one, and you just lay on your side and they can put a couple drops of like a peroxide mixed with water, kind of a 50-50 mix. You can just dissolve it right down. Take it from this mass sticky form, kind of a solid form, and try to get it into a liquid form. And so you're gonna be on your side for about three to five minutes. You're gonna hear it's gonna this bubble. chemistry experience, this volcano experience. You're gonna hear bubbling and gurgling and you're gonna know that action means things are getting done. And your loved one is gonna see the bubbles. It's, it's gonna be exciting. It's kind of fun. Kind yeah, of it's fun. kind of exciting. It might be uh, kind of dirty. So you want to, you know, if you're laying down, maybe put a little <laughs> towel underneath, you know. Maybe be in the bathroom over the sink or something. But uh, once, you've, once you've done that, mm -hmm. once you've softened it with this water hydrogen peroxide mixture, if you get a little blue bulb syringe. The little bulb. You know, like, you remember the snugger getter for the baby. The, the baby <laughs> nose. Yep. Fill that with that same mixture, that water and hydrogen peroxide, and then just flush it out. So now you're going to come up out of the laying position. You've got your cold cereal bowl there to catch it and your friend's gonna stick that syringe bulb right in the ear canal, not jab it, but just be in the opening. And you do wanna stick it in, you don't want it to be out or you'll just, you'll peroxide their whole, <laughs> their self, you know? <laughs> so, so it's kind of nice, you just stick it in there and give it all you got. Yeah. Don't, don't be, don't be kind of nice and easy, you, you wanna really flush it. You can't create enough force with that little blue bulb syringe to hurt the eardrum. Yeah. So you can, you can put that in there and you can, you can, you can squeeze it. And you it. can envision the water going in and pulling that liquid, mm -hmm. that, that dirty liquid out, all that crud. So after you do about two or three peroxide flushes, you can take a different you know, uh, cup of water and usually the water temperature ought to be, you know, maybe not uh, warm and, and definitely not cold, but you're kind of in that lukewarm, maybe even a little cooler than lukewarm if you can. You kind of want to be close to body temperature. Yeah, if you're above right. body temperature that's a good. or below, it could make you dizzy, honestly. Yep. If you put water in your ear canal that's a little cold or a little hot, it's going to make you a little bit dizzy. It's not anything bad necessarily, not yeah, long lasting, but momentarily you might be uncomfortable. So yeah, you want it kind of body temperature, yeah. which is usually kind of warm. So you've done two or three of these peroxide flushes, and now you're going into just fresh water rinses. Let's get all the peroxide out of there. I might even do five to 10 of those, just, you know? And then if you're wondering, how did I do? You know, usually you can feel that you did a really good job. Like, whoa, I'm feeling a lot better. Thanks, mom, or thanks, honey, or, you know, Bobby, thanks for coming over and cleaning my wax, whatever it is. 
But usually you know, but if you're wondering, you can always come to a, your family doctor or come see us. We'll, we'll look in there and see, you know, if you've done a good job. But the old irrigation, you know, using water to irrigate it that works. canal and clean it works really well. Here at our clinic, we do that sometimes. At our clinic, we also have a vacuum that yeah. we sometimes use, especially yeah. for softer wax. And then our favorite way to do it is just to use instruments. We use yeah. surgical otoscopes. We can see down in the ear canal and we put instruments in, we can see what we're doing and we just like to pull it out. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's, there's different um, instruments that we have that are specially made that are extra skinny and thin, but they're also very durable and they don't bend, they're not like plastic. And so these stainless steel tools are, uh, and titanium tools are awesome because they have very skinny necks, you can see around them, you can see exactly where you're going. But cleaning the ear canal, one thing we didn't touch on is the canal is uniquely tender. Mm. Don't you think? Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm a tender many guy. many people. Oh, yeah, and you're yeah. kind of a tough guy. Well, no. But, but what, even as tough as you are, <laughs> your ear canals, I've seen some of the toughest guys. <laughs> oh, it's usually the tough guys. Yeah. The get, it's usually the, the cowboy that comes in and you're yeah. like, this guy's not going to be a problem. Oh. And as soon as you get in there, if you even touch his ear canal, he's like, he's you see his shoulders come oh, off. He's, they, oh, he's crying. He's wincing. Yeah. 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 So, so <laughs> getting your ear clean professionally, you know, we do everything we can to make it as comfortable as possible. But the truth is, it's, it's not like you're scraping, like I can, I can feel that when I, when I just touch on my hand, but that ear canal, with it going from a, a cartilage soft state, you get in about, you know, a third in, and it starts moving into skin on bone. It's really tender. You're into the labyrinth now. The deeper you go in the ear canal, the more tender it gets. The closer you get to the eardrum, the more tender the canal mm -hmm. is. So, it is, you know, you want to you want to understand that. Sure, and and it is a good idea if you're concerned about wax, go to a professional that does earwax. Right. We we are weird. We actually really enjoy it. Yeah. We do it a lot, and it's something that's kind of fun. It's a fun challenge. It's really rewarding to get the big pieces of wax out. And so, yeah, if 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 you're struggling with that, it's a good idea to go to someone that does it regularly and really knows what they're doing in there. Some of the contraindications or some of the side effects of earwax. First one we already kind of mentioned, that is if you get even a little scoop in there, water can get behind it and then you feel like, wow, why, why can't I get the water out of my ear? So it's a weird feeling, it's awkward until it kind of dissipates. That's obvious, but it also, you run the risk that when moisture gets trapped behind any wall, that's not allowing proper, you know, breathability and, and uh, those things, you can you can get swimmer's ear. No, oh, yeah, you, you get can an yeah. infection build up back infection there. Infection build up, a little uh, fungal infection. Mm -hmm. It gets itchy. Oh, it itches so bad. Sometimes it hurts if you've got wax that's deep. Again, oh. the deeper you go in the ear canal, the more sensitive it is. Mm -hmm. And people trying to get their own wax out have pushed it in deep. It can really hurt. It can you'll be see, uncomfortable. You'll see individuals discolored all around the ear. The facial nerve is so stimulated that. Uh, you know, you can, you can tell it's uncomfortable. So that's number one, it's uncomfortable, it can cause infections, it can get itchy. Hearing loss, you can't hear out of that ear? That's you know, an obvious one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can cause temporary hearing loss and that's the one we probably see the most. But when your hearing shuts down pretty quickly, like you're asleep, the wax moves to a certain spot, you wake up and you're like, oh wow, I can't hear out of this ear. Sometimes there's a nervous about that where like, whoa, I'm broken. Like what's going on? And all of a sudden you'll hear a, a sound, a spontaneous sound coming, coming from your body. It's like in your head, you can hear something we call tinnitus. Mm. Most people look at the word and call it tinnitus, but they'll, they'll have a sudden onset of extra sound or spontaneous sound that only they can hear, this tinnitus. Yeah, sometimes wax can cause tinnitus and yeah. getting the wax out solves it. And that's some of the most rewarding wax removal jobs yeah. that we do because someone not only can't hear and maybe it's uncomfortable, but they've also got this ringing in their ear and you pull the wax out and it solves all of it. It's, it's Another fun. interesting one that people don't always think about, but if the wax is significant enough, like the canals fall and it's now pushing on the eardrum, You'll not only have discomfort and, and probably some pain, but that can lead to clumsiness. It can lead to a feeling of disorientation, like I'm just off. And so sometimes dizziness and disorientation and I'm just a little off, I'm not who I normally am, can be a lot, you know, could be just significant wax in the canal. And as wax builds up in the canal, it shifts and moves. Sometimes people will say they hear crackling. 
Mm. It'll kind of crackle and pop. And that's just the wax kind of shifting and yeah. moving as they talk and chew and things. I had a, a friend that came in, she's about my age, and she had these unusual sounds because it was moving. It was like, kept touching the eardrum. She's like, there's, there's a bug in there. There's something, you know, is it an earwig? Or, and she was so nervous and it turned out it was wax. We took the wax out and she felt a lot better, but it, it can move. Yeah, it, yeah. Can, it can be, because the ear canal, you know, it's not always just flat. It can have ups and downs, ridges and valleys. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of exciting in the ear canal. It is, and you know what else we ought to talk about? As we're talking about how to clean the wax, we ought to talk about ear candles. Ooh. Because again, a lot of people will say, well, I just, I just did a candle in my ear, so it yeah. should be good to go. Well, they're so fun. Well, it is fun. And I it, mean, it's a hobby. I mean, it's oh. not a hobby, but it's like a, oh, a it's, social. It's like, a spa it, experience. They do it at the spas. You ooh. go get a massage, they might smell a good? pedicure, and they do an ear candle. And mm. it feels cool because it, it creates mm. pressure when they light those candles. You Avocado can feel ear, maybe, a little spa kind of time. Fun, but, mm. but does it get wax out of the ear? Yeah. Yeah, see, that's an interesting one. We've, we've been to studies, or we've been exposed to studies by our professional organizations that suggest they don't create enough suction power to do a good job with most forms of wax. Now, in this thin type of wax, in the most distal or the, the part that's just really close to the opening, this distal area, it's not very deep and it's super thin. It actually does have the ability to pull some of that out. But when you talk about using a candle to treat someone for earwax, um, it's not going to even come close to, to what we're needing to do. So no. it's a little bit, it's a little bit, I don't know, kind of a gimmicky thing. And you can always tell someone who's been candling. <laughs> don't you love it? You see the entire canal coated with this thin layer of artificial wax. Like there's this unique coating and you're like, oh, you've been candling, haven't you? And bless your heart. Yeah. Because you've been trying. Been trying. I love that they're and trying. And it feels cool. Yeah. You know, maybe they're just at the spa having fun. Avocado ear. Yeah, which I'm might not smell against good. having fun. I like having fun. But no, does it help get wax out? No, it doesn't. In fact, I usually caution against lighting things on fire and sticking it in your ear. We've only it's seen, not I've smart. only seen one really ugly event. So they usually are not too disturbing or, or too unsafe. But yeah, they, they can go in reverse and you can burn canals and, and wax can flow the wrong way. And <laughs> but here's what people say. They say, no, I know they work because I open up the candle and I see all the stuff it pulled out. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the common thing that people say. Next time you think it's working so well, just put it on the sidewalk. Unfortunately, and see if it has the same. If you light that candle, <laughs> let it burn and then just open it up without sticking it in your ear, you'll mm -hmm. see the same stuff. That's the wax from the candle that you're seeing inside of it. Not, it's not coming from your ear. Not the sidewalk yeah. and not the, not the ear canal. So it's not evidence that it worked. It's that just evidence. That was kind of negative. That, that's well, the, people love this. Why are hey, we being? Like I said, I'm not opposed to having fun. Yeah. Just I'm be not careful. opposed to the spa. Be careful. But just know it's not really cleaning your ear. Not real effective. Yeah. So one, one last thing, or I say last, you might come up with another. We can go all day. Yeah. So people that wear hearing devices, it turns out that the number one cause for your hearing device not giving you the proper hearing health mm. and the benefit that you would like to derive is earwax. Are you telling me the number one enemy of hearing aids Ooh. is earwax? Hearing aid enemies. I mean, I mm. think you're right. Yeah, almost always if someone comes in and their hearing aid's not working, the first thing we check is yeah. clogged with earwax. Yep. And the majority of the time, that's the problem. And so, if you haven't had an earwax issue your whole life, and now you're wearing hearing devices, why do they all of a sudden have a little more earwax? Yeah, sometimes putting something in your ear, a foreign object in the ear canal can stimulate wax production. Mm -hmm. But also, a lot of us don't pay attention to how much wax is in our ears because we're not sticking things in them every day. Right. So when you start wearing hearing aids and you're putting it in every day and taking it out every day and you're seeing wax on it, you might think, man, I'm producing way more wax than mm -hmm. I used to when in actuality you're just putting things in your ear more than you used to. That's a good point. The second part to that is obviously some people who are severely hearing impaired, like a lot of hearing loss, very significant, if you stick a pretty big mass in the canal, it, it does impede that natural process mm. of the wax just coming out naturally. Yeah. So you might need a little assistance. That's why as doctors, part of our hearing health program, our treatment plan with the hearing device, is to clean the ear canal regularly. And we're talking like every four to six months. Yeah, probably so should be done So if you're wearing regularly. a hearing device, um, no matter where you received it or obtained it, 
you know, you need to make sure you're having the ear canal looked at at least twice a year, but prob probably more often than that. And you know what else is interesting? One, one, one more, one more fact. One more time. You know, you know most things in our body slow down with age. Mm -hmm. As we age, we tend to slow down a little bit. Not earwax. Yeah. Earwax production tends to increase with age. So as we get older, we tend to produce more. Luckily, our and ears grow too. It's <laughs> always a nice the benefit. The cartilage grows and the wax gets produced. Yeah. So yeah, kind of yeah. a fun fact. Fun fact. Mm -hmm.